<laughs> now, Blake, remember what I said. Drink all the Romulan ale you want. Just be sure to bring back some for the rest of us. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, negotiating with Romulans and being drunk on their own brew? <laughs> <laughs> I could see them trying that. <laughs> I could see them trying that. You have a good point there, Katarina. Yeah, watch out for those Romulans. Yeah, but if we could negotiate peace, I mean a real peace, just think what that could mean for the entire galaxy. Here, here. Mm, I'll count those chickens after they hatch. Couldn't agree more, Cat, but we have to try. On your word, Captain. All right. Take good care of my ship, Commander. Your <laughs> ship? <laughs> of course, Captain. I will. Despite how we feel about the Romulans, this should go pretty smoothly. I'm sure it will, Captain. Enjoy all your hobnobbing with Starfleet bigwigs. Whatever you say, you're the doctor. Energize. First officer's log. This round of peace talks between the Federation and Romulans nears its conclusion. Captain Hovis has been gone for 20 hours, but is expected to return soon. Rumors abound a new era with Romulus as an ally is at hand. Yet skepticism and mistrust weigh on the enthusiasm. We maintain standard orbit around Angel One as we await the return of our captain, who was instrumental in the negotiations. You think it's even possible? I can't imagine ever having peace knowing our history with the Romulans. <laughs> How would you know? What are you, 12 years old? Forward phaser will comply. All weapons and operational ready. After the Romulans first violated the treaty by entering the neutral zone on Stardate 1709.2, there have been 944 attacks on Federation worlds and outposts, 18 ships, and 361 souls lost. I stand corrected. Well, I for one can't imagine ever trusting them. Too cunning for my blood. Well, if there is peace, we're going to have to look at and talk about them differently. I'll take an awful lot of learning before we... Commander, the captain is preparing to beam up now. Mr. Pacini, are you ready to transport the captain? Aye, sir. I've routed the coordinates to the transporter room. I'm sure the captain will have some interesting stories to tell. Commander, the captain is aboard. Very good. Commander, scanners are picking up a low energy beam penetrating our hull. Forward scanner to bridge. When did you first detect this? About the same time the captain beamed aboard. It's a non-lethal, radiation-driven particle beam coming from the Romulan ship. Shields up. The beam stopped, but should I raise them anyway? Until we know what that was, yes. All right, raising shields. The USS Viking has departed with the Federation delegation at warp six. Commander, we're being hailed by the Romulans. On screen. Commander Rayak, how may I be of service? Is your ship having some sort of problem, Commander? I see you raise shields after your captain came aboard. Need I remind you of the delicate times in which we live? I would hate for an overzealous first officer to somehow sabotage the great gains we Romulans have made to bring about a closer, more trusting existence with our Terran friends. Commander, you... A low-energy particle beam from your ship penetrated our hull, and we did- Our ship? You say our ship launched a weapon of some sort against your starship? I did not say weapon. I said- Commander, need I remind you that our peace delegation is aboard my ship? Your delegation warped away just moments ago. We Romulans have been appealing for peace. Do not make wild accusations against us. Ah, Captain Hovis. I hope you can help clear up this matter. Commander Rayek. Shame you couldn't have joined us on Angel One. Now, what seems to be the problem? Your first officer was just about to justify why she raised shields just after you came aboard. Shields? Why? Well, Captain, a low-energy particle beam from the Romulan ship penetrated our hull after you came aboard. And I assured her that is impossible. Perhaps the Cherokee is in need of repairs? <laughs> well, I apologize for her actions, Rayek. But these are interesting times, I'm sure you would agree. 
Commander, we can't simply go and provoke our new friends here. But Captain, we detected... Yes, I know. We didn't even know where this beam was coming from. Yes, Commander, that will be all. Thank you for your patience, Rick. I apologize for any misunderstanding. It was my honor to be part of the Federation's peace delegation and meet with the Ryman delegation. I'll be in engineering. Captain, can we discuss this matter? The matter is closed, Commander. Matthewson, take us out of orbit. Position is two kilometers from the Romulan ship. We're not ready to depart just yet. Maybe he had too much Romulan ale. Engineering, please. Commander, communication line to the Romulan vessel just opened. From engineering. Bridge to Hovis. Communications are being sent from engineering to the Romulan ship. Yes, Commander. I am aware. That's where I am now. We had some unfinished business, which is why our ships remain. Do you need any assistance, Captain? Hovis out. Five hundred. This better be good. I went through the records, but I was unable to determine what data was in the transmissions. Transmissions, plural? Yes. Something is definitely wrong. We need to do something. Yeah, we're two kilometers from the Romulans. We're sitting ducks. We have to do something. This is sounding a bit too much like mutiny for my taste. Is it mutiny if the doctor needs to remove the captain from his chair? Without cause? Yes, it is. There is cause. We just have to recognize it. But, Commander, you're acting as if the captain is a traitor. I'm talking as if his brain has been altered. Altered? His judgment, his reasoning skills, th something. What do you have to go on? The secret communication. Uh, the lower energy particle beam right after the captain transported aboard. And I've never seen the captain address the commander in the manner that he did. Especially in front of us. Or in front of the Romulans. Two different crewmen asked me what was wrong with him after having odd encounters. The low energy beam sounds concerning. The timing is peculiar. Doesn't anyone find it odd? But the Romulans haven't asked us why we're still here. Are we in agreement then that something needs to be done? I'll agree to giving him a physical, but that's all until I know more. I don't support mutiny. I'm with you, Cherie. We have to be loyal to the captain. Thank you. Nobody is talking about mutiny, just so you understand. Doc, do you think he'll submit to your request for a physical? No. But I'll do it anyway. What can I do for you, Joey? Blake, um, I'd like to give you a physical. Why, we just did one four months ago. I just do. You just don't do anything. You always have your reasons. That's true, and I have a reason for wanting to examine you. What's your reason? The crew thinks you've been acting strange lately. We're all concerned about you. Strange in what way? I don't know, just strange. Ever since you returned from meeting the Romulans. I'm just tired after stressful negotiations. That doesn't explain certain behaviors. I'm not submitting to a physical doctor. Oh, so a minute ago I was Joey? Now I'm doctor? I'm also not interested in playing games or entertaining your irrelevant observations. Then you should probably start explaining some of your erratic behavior. I don't have to explain myself to the crew. 
No, you don't have to, but when there are serious concerns, they'll trust you more. If you give them something, some morsel of explanation. I have my reasons. You always have your reasons. Yes. Captain, am I going to have to start throwing Starfleet regulations at you? I thought that'd get your attention. When? No time like the present, Captain. I'm starting to agree with you guys. I was able to decode some of the files the Captain accessed and they had to do with Federation security and strategies. Not ship specs? Maybe. I couldn't decode everything. Why would he come to engineering when he could access the same information from his quarters? It's a good question. Perhaps he didn't want anything traced back to him. But we know he was here, and about him sending a message to the Romulans. I suggest. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But what I'm trying to say is we've got this situation. Well, there you two are! Imagine finding two of my bridge officers here in engineering. You know, since you're off duty, why don't you make a trip down to Angel One? The ladies run the show down there. <laughs> You might actually enjoy that. <laughs> no, Captain, we're just chatting. Uh, yeah, Patini had called me. Was no, I was just telling you about my new Vulcan. I understand. I understand. But you're still acting a little bit strange. Maybe I should send you to sick bay for a physical. Now go and find someplace else to chat and leave my engineer alone. Yes, sir. I would imagine you don't have much time to chat either. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Come. You wanted to see me, sir? You bet. Sit. I've been told that you and a few of the officers have some concerns about me. Yes, sir, we have. Have you lost confidence in me? I wouldn't go that far, sir. Then how far would you go, Commander? I've got senior officers holding secret meetings behind my back. Doc Shepard thinks I'm unfit for duty, gives me an exam. How far would you go, Commander? I want to know. It was only one meeting. What? It was only one meeting. I heard you. One. One meeting? And what was that little powwow I countered down in engineering? Hmm? And who attended your one meeting? Answer me. I order you to answer me! No, sir. You know, let's talk about mutiny, don't you? Nobody's talking about mutiny, no one. A rose by any other name. More like every rose has its thorns. We're trying to determine the cause of your frustration or your distraction, whatever it is. We want to help you. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine! When people are fine, sir, they don't yell it. Now you listen to me. If I see one more impromptu little tea party or hear any talk of mutiny, I'm going to take you and the concerned officers into the brig, Commander. And you'll come out a lieutenant. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Get out of here. First officer's personal log. We now have a list of at least six actions Captain Hovis has taken which have alarmed us. The captain has given no indication he is willing to let us know why we are still here or what he has transmitted to the Romulans. I've tried to be reasonable, tried to remember my rank and role, but I fear for the safety of my ship and crew. We may have to act. How long can the humans and Romulans stay here? We should strike first, and use surprise to our advantage! <laughs> We'll strike on my command, Jadrock, and we will end this alliance before it begins. We will become heroes of the Klingon Empire and the House of Kibnar. We'll last for generations and flourish. Yes. 
Commander, are all stations reporting ready for departure? Yes, sir. Engineering, stand by for warp. Aye, Captain. Set a course for Deep Space Station K-7. And let the crew know we'll have some time for R&R when we arrive. It's a long way to the Klingon Empire. Belay his orders! Pardon me? Belay my orders? Doc, you do not overrule me. Who do you think you are? Right now, I'm just concerned about who you are. Our captain has been compromised by the Romulans. Do not obey his orders. Pursuant to Starfleet regulations. You do not countermand my orders. Get off my bridge! Security, I want this man in the brig now! A microscopic device was implanted in the base of your brain, Blake. The Romulans have been controlling you. Get away from me! Get back! Get back! I mean it. Everyone, back to your stations! Red alert! Shields up! Energize all weapons! I need to know which Federation starships are closest. Set a course for Starbase 74 and notify Starfleet what's happening. And we need to know where our captain went. The Age Enterprise and Viking are over 18 hours away. Sir, we are being hailed by the Romulans. On screen. You seem to have lost a captain, Commander. What have you done with him? <laughs> How can you blame us when he has been helping us out of his own free will? That's a lie and you know it. You planted a nano chip in his neck which made its way to his brain. A nano chip? You Terrans must be more advanced than we are. We have no such technology. Another lie. You've been controlling him all along. You activated the chip as soon as he returned to the Cherokee. Give us back our Captain Rayak immediately. This is an act of war and we will not back down. Your Captain has already supplied enough data to help us destroy the Federation. And when we get the information we need from his memory, we will dispose of him the same way you Terrans would of your dead pets. That wasn't from the Romulans. The Klingon battlecruiser has just decloaked. Damage report. Structural damage on decks 9 and 14. Casualties on deck 12. Captain, shields are down to 71%. Pacini, this is Kerinsky. I'm in command. We're jumping to warp. Weapons are offline. Pacini! We're losing the port to cell. Shields are down to 43%. The only thing left is impulse. We're being hailed. On screen. Who are you? Kebnar, hero of the Klingon Empire. I'm going to stop this attempt by the Federation and the Romulans to join forces to destroy our world. We were trying to negotiate a peace, Kibnar. <laughs> Only one option left. You're saying? We can't go to warp. The shields are failing, and we have no weapons to fight back. There is only one option. Prepare that option. Nichols, did you get that message off to Starfleet? To what end? No one can help you now. No one. Yes, Commander. I will report our sensors indicated that a Federation starship and Romulan bird of prey destroyed each other. But I wanted you to know who was going to kill you. It'll never work, Kibnar. You'll start a full-blown war. That's what warriors live for, is it not? And now, I give you a gift. You get to die like warriors. An honorable death. <laughs> now. 